Hey, Dina. This is Natalie Callback, and I'm here with Dina Wakely. I'm so excited that she's going to be part of Creative Jumpstart 2018. And so if you don't know Dina, then I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She's an amazing artist. She lives in Arizona, I think, right? Yep. Yeah. And um, before I tell too much, maybe Dina tells us a little bit about her and her work. I'm a, I'm a poser. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, I just do what I want. I mean, my work is, it's born from art journaling, but then I, you know, branch into painting and I do what I want. There's no have to, there's only get to's when you do this. So I just mess around and have fun and design products for a ranger and teach and, it's great. Yeah, I know um, Dina for a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we both kind of dabbled into scrapbooking way back, back, back then. And um, then you could all, almost tell back then already that we had a little spot for pains and being messy yeah. and not doing whatever people told us to do, I guess, yeah. right? So uh, I'm, I love that Dina, I mean, I loved her work always, and it's pretty cool that she's now one of the signature designers for Ranger and has some really cool, I like her paints a lot, acrylic paints and some uh, scribble sticks. I think they're called, don't kill me if I don't know. No, that's right. Okay. What else do you have? Just come on, yeah. tell us. Stamps and stencils and brushes and the new media journal that has all the different surfaces inside. It's really fun. Yeah. And DVDs from Northlight, a couple of books. Yeah, guys, if you haven't seen Dina's amazing journal, I, th I think you have, but if you haven't, that was probably the one thing that excited me the most uh, when I was at the show this year uh, in January. And I already have three. Um, <laughs> I use them all for different things. It's a, So they are filled with different kinds of papers and also with burlap and canvas, um, which gives you the opportunity to really dabble into different um, substrates and use different paint media and also get different effects, which is really, really cool. Um, it's interesting because... I love it so much. I haven't shared a lot that I have done with it. Um, being that I usually do double spreads. Oh, yeah. And it screws me up. <laughs> yeah, if, you have a, if you have a watercolor and then a craft. But sometimes I go right over. I mean, I'm not a big double spread person. Um, yeah. So for me, it's not too big of an issue. But sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll just continue that over there. And I continue on to the canvas all the time. I love it. It's um, it's definitely something that gets me out of the box because it yeah. makes me think differently and I, I really like it. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, check it out. Um, it's really, really cool. So um, I'm glad yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's always so weird that uh, I guess some people don't know, but it's kind of weird when you do products is the time you're planning and doing ahead of time. And then it takes a long time until they're actually done and made. And yeah. then they finally get released. And then it takes another little time before they hit the stores. So by the time you finally hold them in your hands, there's like months and months work in it. Like how long is your process usually working on something until it gets released in January, for example? I know Ranger likes to work as far ahead as you can. Um, it just depends on sourcing but in six to 12 months in advance usually in them they would even like it longer because sometimes if you're sourcing something from overseas you know samples come and you kill the product at the last minute because it wasn't what you thought it would be right so you know you can expect something to come and then you change your mind because you don't like it or you love it and then they rush it through so it, it, it just depends but yeah they're the earlier the better um, so we work minimum six months ahead. So everything for January is either done or in, you know, hoping to get done, waiting on prototype type things so we can test it. But And then we're all, we'll already, right after the show, stuff will be due again for um, summer and beyond. So, yeah, we work early. Yeah, it's, a, it's fun. I mean, it's like 
it's this really weird feeling that you kind of almost forgot, not forgot, but it's like you're excited because you put in your new designs, right? You're like, wow, you know, this is so cool. Yeah. And then it's like nothing, 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 nothing. And by the time you finally get the prototype, you're actually all, almost already working on something else. And you usually are. You yeah. usually <laughs> have maybe handed in the next right. stuff. Like somebody recently on my group was like, it'd be great to have these stamps. I'm like, oh, that is a good idea, but I already have the next two releases done. <laughs> so, well, you know, I'll work on that. That's a great idea. I love it when people give me ideas, but it's going to be a while. <laughs> exactly. It's funny. <laughs> so, Dina, um, you, I, I always ask this question now because I find it interesting what people say. So let's say um, you could go on any artful adventure. So time, no obstacle. I know you're a very, very busy person. Uh, money is no obstacle. You know, you can do whatever you want. What What would be an artful adventure for you that you would like to do right now? Do you mean like take a class from someone else or just go somewhere? And anything. It could be anything that has to do with art. Like um, could be a journey, could be a class, could be, you know... Um, I don't know, going to space and drawing. <laughs> We're, uh, teaching the space station art, uh, astronauts how to right. art journal. Uh, you know, I love to travel like we just got back from Japan. So I find that incredibly inspiring. I mean, just one photograph I took there, I've made, I must have made 20 paintings since I got home based on that one photograph. And so we, you know, we love, love, love to go places. And so I, I kind of have a bee in my bonnet about Thailand. I'd really love to go there and travel more. We're scuba divers, and so lately I've been wanting to go to places that have <laughs> good scuba. So I want cool textiles and cool colors and different culture, and then I want to be able to scuba dive and see Nemo. So I just, yeah, I would love more time to explore those sorts of motifs. Because you go somewhere else and you'll be in an old church and you'll look at a pattern and think, wow. You know, and then that can set you off on a creative path that, you know, you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Right. So you said, um, could it be a class too? Is there someone, if let's say that or a life artist that you would be, if that person would be still alive or even if alive, you would take a class from? I mean, I definitely need to take more classes because I get so much out of it. But there's a Canadian artist, Claire Desjardins. I love her work. And she teaches now and then. I'd love to go to one of her classes. I think that would be really fun. I'd like to do that. That sounds cool. If I could, I would probably like, I don't know, I, w I want to be an assistant for a week or so or longer. I don't know how nice he is of Anselm Kiefer, but he might be a really nasty guy. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Time limit. Then you right. can learn. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you just mentioned that, that you were just in Japan. Again, guys, mind you, this is, you know, recorded in somewhere. Uh, so Dina just came back from Japan and um, I'm so jealous. Um, but tell us a little bit about that trip. Is there like, did you buy like art supplies? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I bought so much little paper and you know, we love cats. We're a cat family. And so I, and everything there is so cute. So I bought tons of paper and pens and um, you know, Japanese pens are the best. They're just the bomb.com. So Every time we, everywhere we went, we had to find the stationery. There were stores that had just really cool, huge sheets of paper, and I didn't, I actually didn't buy any because I know it would come here and just sit, sit, sit. So I did buy what I thought I would use. Um, but I bought um, cool, you know, cool washi tapes and um, little postcards with just cool printing on it. I mean, everything is designed with thought in mind instead of just making something. Mm. It's made with almost with intent, you know, intent, the design is so well done. Mm -hmm. It was, I think, I think, you know, Northern Europe's like that too. You know, you go into a store in Norway and it's just so well designed. So I just, I just really enjoyed that and bought tons of bits and bobs. I mean, I came, I mean, it didn't take up a ton of footprint in my suitcase, but I, <laughs> I have a lot of receipts, <laughs> you know, pens here and this fountain pen with this cool ink cartridges and traveler's notebook store. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. So just lots of notebooks and papers and I mean, everything's little. I think I bought some little, like 
so if you're a planner person, you'd go crazy because there's tons of little bits and bobs that you can add. So yeah, I did. I bought tons of stuff, tons, but it was fun. Speaking of pets, by the way, uh, I have a cat who just goes bonkers because there's a reflection somewhere. So if um, you see a cat flying behind me or something, that's Niles. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so okay. did you do any art while you were traveling? You know, not, not really. This, my, this was a family trip. I, I'm not the best public artist. I know other people are really great about sitting somewhere. I mean, I can sit somewhere and sketch a bit, but I'm not great at like, I don't know. I'm solitary. I really am. I'm better at home in my bubble. Um, I took a lot of photos and hung out with my family, but I, I, I once was making art in a hotel room and spilled my water cup down the sheets. And I'd been using night paint, which is dark navy. And so the water was navy. And it went down the sheets onto the bed skirt and all over the carpet. And so I'm always like, oh my gosh. So I think I'm more of a water brush and scribble stick set person, you know, and I even like to bring a pencil you don't have to sharpen. So I bring those china markers. Yeah. So like, yeah. You put the Things like they're for, you know, just those, because I like the crayon you look they give. So between that, that's permanent, not water soluble, and scribble sticks and a water brush is probably about all I would do in public. I'm not, I'm just, I'm not even the best artist in a class, as people know who have taken classes with me. <laughs> and I've made the worst art while you were all watching me. <laughs> um, I would say, well, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> well, that turned out bad, you know, I don't care. Because um, I always have a million ways to fix everything. So... I always tell people, if you just lower your standards, you'll have like, more fun if, as an artist. Because, like, you know, no matter what, I can cut it up and at the best. Exactly. So. That's funny um, that you say that because my next question is actually, so the theme for Creative Jumpstart this year is um, now we're cooking. And I know that none of us has cooked anything up for that yet because we are still in the preparation mode. But... Um, I kind of like like to think of, you know, I, I have a class that's called um, similar, but it has a totally different um, idea behind it. But the thing is like, I always think about like, how do you cook? Is, has that anything to do with art? So are you more like, you know, when you cook yourself, like really in the kitchen, are you like the, the Swedish chef who goes like, I'm going to do it in German. I don't know how you guys do it, but he sings like, and then he shoots like something from the top. Or are you like, I don't know, someone who prepares everything nicely chopped in, you know, you have to have a recipe and you chop everything up and then you put everything as it's supposed to go in, into your pot. Or are you like whacking up everything? So what kind of cook are you in your kitchen? I'm actually a really good cook because my mom had a food science and nutrition degree growing up. And so we grew up eating kind of good food. My, she's, my mom's a really good cook. But I, I, and I like to cook because I think life's too short to eat bad food. But I'm not a messy cook. I'm the messiest artist. As I sit in my studio, I'm surrounded by junk on the floor. There's paint on my walls. I mean, I am a hot mess in my artwork. But kitchen, I'm really clean because my mom was so afraid of salmonella and mm -hmm. E. coli and like, I clean as I go. I put it right in the dishwasher. Um, you know, I don't need recipes. Sometimes I use recipes, sometimes not, because I've been cooking for so long. But I am a, I, I am a clean cook. Are you and, organized too? Are you like chopping everything up, or are you go like while you go, you know exactly what things? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I. Yeah, I do a little bit. If you know, if you're doing stir fry, you gotta you gotta chop it all up in advance. But it, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not too bad. I mean, every now and then I'll make something. I'm like, that's gross. I won't eat that. <laughs> My husband eats everything. He's like, it's not bad. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm having lucky charm. But, so you try, but like, you like to try new things too, I guess. I get really food bored, super food bored. I just cannot eat the same thing. I don't like leftovers either. My husband will eat leftovers every day for work. Not me. No way. I just think they're disgusting. <laughs> so I don't, I don't eat leftovers. And, um, but yeah, I, I, cooking, like when I'm really busy, cooking is the first thing to go, though, for me. I feel like, well, we can get food at somewhere else. So I don't, you know, I get out of the habit. But yeah, I'm not too crazy, which is the exact polar opposite of my art life. Because my art life is, I mean, I have paint to my elbows. It's, my whole career is made on spilling things. So I'm not very clean and neat in my art at all. 
that's funny that it is so different. I mean, I'm not a very messy cook either, but I'm also, uh, I'm very like, I mean, I think the same thing is that I like to try out new things. So mm -hmm. when I travel, I buy like, you know, spices that I might not know or things that I'm like discovered and I'm like, I got to try this at home too with, you know, certain um, <laughs> degrees of success, you know. But uh, I definitely like to try out new things in the kitchen and everything, but I'm very orderly in the kitchen. And I'm the one who like, I chop everything up before, mm. which drives my husband kind of crazy. He's like, that this takes, exactly. yeah, he's like, that takes like twice as long, you know? And I actually, but I like it. I love when I have like little bowls and they have like, you know, the different ingredients and, and then I can be, there's a cooking term for that called mise en place, and it means everything's in its place. Ah. And so that means you could, you're supposed to do that. I've watched enough Food Network to know that. I've watched enough Top Chef to know. <laughs> you're supposed to pre-do everything. Um, and I always tell people in class, like if you're making painted deli paper or prints or if you're doing prep work, that's your creative mise en place. Like I do that, I do that for art too. I don't ever sit down and think, okay, self, you better – make a page from scratch today. And that means start with a piece of painted paper. No, I, the painted paper was done a week ago when I didn't feel like doing anything else. Right. So I, I do, I, you know, I do do that creatively too, but I'm a mess, mess in the studio. <laughs> really. I've been a mess in the studio. My studio is so terrible. It's actually funny that I used to be a paralegal because every <laughs> client who was not organized, which is mostly like 99% of the clients are not, I'm sorry, not organized. I, and bring like paperwork and they're stained or, you know, not, you know, in the chronological order or whatever. And you're like, really, I have to read all your letters before I know, you know, in which order this is. They would drive me crazy. I was like the most organized person at work. And now it's like, because my desk is in my studio, I'm happy if I find anything. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's like, maybe it's good, you know. I think it's always good that there is a part of us that can can do that and uh, that you allow yourself to yeah. be that way because we have so many areas in our life that we have to be perfect, right? So why constrain yourself when you do art if you actually have fun not being constrained? So... So, Dina, um, do you have any idea what you're going to do for your video for Creative Jumpstart? No. <laughs> that, that deadline's not burning. That fire's not burning big enough. <laughs> how, yeah. far, how far away from a deadline do you, do you need the... That's a good question, actually. Do you need the pressure of a deadline to do something? Yeah. Um, otherwise, I will never do it. I, I just, my, I'm really right-brained, like crazy. But my growing up, I do, my dad trained us to do two very left brain things. The first is to be on time. Like, I, I'm just not a late person. Yeah. My, my family could leave the house on fire if it meant being late. Like, being late was just considered so quintessentially rude. Yeah. So I... We're just not late. In fact, we're always early everywhere. I'm like, drive around the block one more time. Because, I mean, we're just, I, I'm just, I don't, being late makes me very anxious. And my anxiety will just panic. And mm. I just take them late. So I'm not late. And then I'm, I I do meet my deadlines. It might be 5 o'clock on the day of the deadline. Uh, but I do meet it. And so the pressure, of, I do work really well under a deadline. The pressure mm. of the deadline is great. Like this week, I came home from Tokyo last week. And I had tons of stuff to do. I was exhausted, jet lagged, had to hit that ground running. Like it was brutal. <laughs> Met my deadline, got it all done. This week I don't have a big pressing deadline. Now I have a list of like eight things I should be doing. Yeah. Um, and I've done none of them because the deadline's just not burning big enough. So I don't, I don't know. I kind of hate that about myself. I wish I could have really made my life easier next week if I did half the crap this week, but I just haven't. I just, I've been painting and journaling and, you know, and I think there's value in that too because it gives me a new class idea for next mm -hmm. year. You know, oh, that's a new way to use that. You know, but 
I should have filmed 10 tip videos by now. Have I done any of them? No. no. So I, I kind of hate that about myself a little bit, but, you know. I would have never guessed that because um, I think, I think, and we talked about that in private before, is like when people sometimes ask, um, why are you, where you, how do you do what you do? You know, how did you get there? And, and I'm not speaking just for art. I think it's like you have to be on time. You have to meet your deadlines. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to work under pressure. And so um, I love to work with artists for create, with Creative Jumpstart who are on time. And you are extremely, extremely on time always. Like, <laughs> like with one everything. Year, one year I think I negotiated a week longer for my deadline because I was going to be out of town. You were like, okay. But, I don't but, even remember that because you're always like so on time. And it's like, it's like, it's funny because um, actually the people, I would say the, the artists that I know that are the busiest artists that I know are the most reliable artists and they come back right away with everything. But don't you think that's how you do well in this industry or any industry? Mm -hmm. Magazines will keep asking you to do something if you get the, your stuff done and don't pull them along and, and make false promises. Like, I remember I learned that once from when I was on Maya Rose design team. I think I had this assignment and I looked at it and I looked at everything that I had to do and I knew it was going to be it, superhuman. And so I called um, Caroline and said, I think I emailed her and said, I, I can't, I, I need this much more time. And she was so willing to negotiate with mm -hmm. me because it was early. It wasn't. The day before it was due, and I said, sorry, I didn't get my stuff done, and then, and then dump it on her. Right. I mean, I, I, you know, so I feel like that's one thing I'm, my dad did really good at teaching us is you, you know, I always, I, I do stuff on my to-do list in, to, in, to, in day order for when the next deadline is, and I don't know if it's going to be bigger, I need to start working on Like, I do plan my, as, as disorganized as I am, um, I should give you a shot on my floor, it's so bad, but um, for, for my time, it, you know, when people are, are relying on you. It's so unprofessional yeah. to yeah. to not meet and to not communicate about it. And I think maybe one time in my life, like the day something was due, I had to say, "I'm not going to be done," because it's just very rare for me. I I feel like it's disrespectful, and you know, people. You know, I've heard lots of stories in the industry about artists that are so mm -hmm. talented, yeah. and then they don't get their stuff done. And um, like, I get it's hard. I, my family suffers. I suffer <laughs> like we all suffered, but you know, I try to meet my commitments. So it's really, really important to me. I, you know, your reputation is important and I hate, you know, if somebody wants to work with me, I want them to know that I'm going to meet my end of the deal. Right. Um, you know, and creativity is hard because forced creativity, mm. can, you can make your best work or your worst. Right. But I know. I submitted stuff and thought, oh, yeah. but that's what I did. You know, that's what came out at the time. And then I submitted stuff that I was like, whoa, I rock that. So, you know, <laughs> and that, I can't force that, but yeah. I can get it done. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Play, I think the playtime in between is important because even though this week I haven't been incredibly productive on my to-do list, by doing the other stuff that's not necessary, it's actually going to make the to-do list easier next week. And I, I know that seems... Now, a friend of mine uh, once called that uh, percolating time. Yeah. You need to have, like, like I have a deadline right now, which is looming over me. Um, plus, I'm going on vacation. So I couldn't even, like, you know, ask for, not that I do that, but, like, right. I couldn't even if I wanted to. So um, for an extension. And I'm like... But I know what I wanted, like what it is about. Like I have been thinking about what it is going to be about, and you know about a strategy. But I'm not yet in the in the like. I have this moment where I'm like, this is not good enough. This is like this is crap. You know, basically, if I start it now, it's not going to be awesome. You know, you can bet do better with it. And then I do something else like cooking or cleaning or riding my bike. You know. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's so true. And then, you know, and then you start, and then at some point you also just have to start it. But then yeah. all that time before where you thought, you know, I didn't really work towards it. 
it also it it comes it, if there is something going on in your you know, my little brain in the background, you know. Yeah, no, I think it's true. Like even though I don't know exactly what I'm going to do for Creative Jumpstart, I know when the deadline is. I know the theme, and so it, and it's on my list. Right. So you know, as it gets closer and closer and closer, and I you know I would never do it like the, I wouldn't start it the day of. I'm like I'll hand it in, but. You know, I, I know it's coming, and I think having that in your mind is like the little foundation kind of seedlings, and then you might get an idea or test a few things out, but yeah, I think I think that's important. You have to have that creative, well, I almost said the word balance. We need a different word for creative balance, because I'm so unbalanced. <laughs> There's a really, really good, cool uh, TED Talk. Uh, I forgot what it's called. I could send the link out, but it's, um, it's this guy who talks about... Um, you know, deadlines and how he works and that he has this like little procrastination ape that's like, no, let's not work on this yet. Let's like rudder the ship somewhere else and like look around, you know. And then at some point the panic monster comes and he's yelling at the ape and is like, go away, we have to work now. And then everything is fine. And it's like, it's really funny how he, how he talks about it. And it's basically, that's what's, going on it's like little stick figures in my head that are like hey this is so much fun we have a deadline but let's take care of this a little bit later you know? so. yeah <laughs> well sometimes the later comes because there's too much on my plate like mm -hmm. i have a bigger fire burning um but sometimes it's just i don't have an idea yet or you know again you can't force it necessarily you have to do you think like sometimes I guess we're all like kind of like feeling and I, I don't think that doesn't it doesn't matter if you're an artist or not you know whatever you do in your life you have this moment where you feel like this is all too much I have so much to do you know would be great to just have like two months where I don't have anything to do do you think you would cope well with two months not not having any deadlines no teaching gigs I think it would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I might get a little bored, but there's so many things that are on my personal to-do list. Like, I have two giant canvases in the garage that I've not even put gesso on. Like, I'd like to paint for a little more for me and um, take more classes and that sort of thing. So, I, for, in that sense, it would be glorious. Um, so that could be your creative jumpstart, having more time. Yeah. Let me know how that, how I can, you know, if I just needed to sleep less... Maybe I should try cocaine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those, like, it, last year, it felt, you know, being on the road sucks your soul away. And, I, you know, I hate to say that because I think some people think you're so lucky to do what you do. And I am. I mean, what I do is a privilege. And it's a privilege to be there when art is born. And it's a privilege to help people on their creative journey. Like, I will never discount that. That is an absolute amazing gift that I've been, been able to experience. The, the bad side to that is it's time away from my family mm. and there's tons of prep that goes into it. And there's, there's, um, lots of nights by yourself in a hotel room and lots of, you know, 110,000 miles a year on a plane. And, you know, it just, it, it has taken a big emotional and physical toll mm. on me and on my family. And so there's an opportunity cost there. And, so sometimes I feel like, how can I do what I love to do and not have such a big opportunity cost? Mm -hmm. And I haven't, I haven't quite figured that out, but um, it, it's, it, it's one of those things. Like this month, I only scheduled a, a class in May, two classes in Mesa, mm -hmm. this weekend, and because I don't teach locally that often, and it, it's just to think, my gosh, I'm gonna have three and a half weeks in my own bed. Yeah. You know, I can make dinner every night and not have to eat out because eating out becomes like, uh, I have to eat another chicken salad. I <laughs> lose my mind. You know, it's cooked for my family and it's just, it's just such a delight, you know. So, I don't know. It, it, I think two months at home would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think it is, but, a, I think it is an, I don't know, I, I think it's an American thing in a way that, um, so when I lived still in Europe, uh, you know, we get six months, it w not six months, that would be amazing, uh, six weeks of vacation, right? Like, basically, 
you start off with maybe four when you're 20 and in your 20s after university you know you usually get at a company like four weeks of course when you're working for yourself that's always different but even though when we lived in Germany uh, we would go on vacation for two or three weeks and I would not do anything like I, I mean I was also not doing that many things but you know uh, even as my own boss I would not you know check my mails that much like I would be we would be on a road trip and every three days I might like take a peek and I would only take care of the things that are burning, you know, and that was it. And since we live in the States for three years uh, and my husband now works again for an American company, which means way less vacation uh, as well. And so he checks his email constantly, even when we are, you know, uh, it's like an evening out and, you know, he's like, no, I got to check. I, I, they're working on San Francisco time, we are here, you know, or we going on vacation. We haven't had a vacation where we basically did not, like every day in the morning and in the evening, take care of something that has to do with work. And um, last week I went to Germany and then I took my godson with me and he's a teenager. And basically, you know, he, he he's 17 and he hasn't been in, you know, in the States. And somehow I was like, whatever, I'm not, you know, and I did not work. Like I checked maybe twice my emails mm -hmm. and that was it. And in the the first couple of days, I was like really not well coping with that. I was like, what if the, like opportunities or things are going to burn, things are going to be really terrible, you know? And now I'm like, I mean, I have the opposite problem right now. This is my first day back to work and um, it's very hard to get back to work. But I don't remember I haven't been that relaxed in a while. Like, I think this morning I threw out so many emails at once. Like, I was really on it. And I think part of it is that I'm not, you know, I'm not that stressed. And I really, that really helped, like, just having one and a half weeks not dealing with anything. Um, so I don't know if it, I, I don't know if that sounds horrible to think it's like an American, but I think like in America, I feel more like you have to work, 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 work. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, they've done studies about that, that we have like the worst vacation, um, time off and no family leave. And I mean, on and on and on. And it's hard to unplug. I mean, it is yeah. it's really hard to unplug. It's, and I think that's why. I love scuba diving. I know that's so not artsy, but it sounds so cool though. I think you should come with me. I think when you scuba dive, you know, you might die. I mean, you're on life support, right? You've got to breathe and you've got to, I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. I've never felt unsafe, but what I'm saying is there's so many things to think about. And then you get down there and it's like being on another planet. It's like being in outer space because it's just so amazing to see what you can see under the water. And then you breathe, and it is the only place I'm not a ball of stress. It's wow. the only that I'm not thinking, you know what, in a week I have something due. Or, uh, you know, gosh, I've got another set of stamps I have to draw. Or, you know, it, it's, you know, or I, I need to pack crates. You know, i got to send my crates to this next teaching gig, and I've got to go 10 days early for UPS Ground. And if they don't go UPS Ground, then blah. You know, it is the only place I'm not a ball of stress. It really is. Like, it just... I just, I'm under the water and I just feel it go. Wow. And love it. You know, I just love it. I just think, cause you know, you're, you're concentrating that you're breathing, <laughs> you're breathing and you're swimming and it, and to concentrate on your breathing. Like, yeah, there, that's profound really to think about that. You are making sure that you are breathing in enough to keep your, cause your, your, your lungs make you rise or sink. Depend. You'll be, they put, because I'm very chubby. <laughs> Uh, they give they put weight belt on you and so you to help you stay under the water because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like a, like I'm a, I'm bouncing at the top like it's hard for me to stay under <laughs> my fat makes me rise dead serious so I'm heavily weighted and then I've learned that if I take a big breath I can go up ten feet and wow. then if I sail I can you know so so as you're as you're as you're swimming along and if I'm if there's a piece of coral in my way I take a breath wow and then. You're just conscious of how you're breathing, not in a bad way, like a stressful, panic way, but just there's something really therapeutic about breathing in and out. And, you know, do I ever take the time at home? I'm like, oh, or, you know, you know, right. it's, it's about breathing and being free and being weightless. I mean, 
when you're neutrally buoyant in that water, you're weightless. And there's just something, there's just, I don't know, it's just psychologically, mentally, physically freeing to me. My husband hates scuba diving, um, but I, I've, all my boys are certified. And we've gone a couple of levels into it. And we just, gosh, we just love it. And so I think maybe everybody needs some sort of release. I mean, if I were good at relaxing, like I've, I've gone before and like had a pedicure and they're like, can't you relax? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I can't. I'm so stressed. Like I'm a ball of stress. Um, I can't relax. And so I think if we, I think our art would get better if we would maybe mm -hmm. be, be weightless somehow and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and have, you know, give ourselves that permission to not check the email, to not, to unplug, you know, I'll be at target and I'll be like, Ooh, looking at my, yeah, app. that really is a curse because this makes it like, Oh, I just got an email and Oh, it's something I have to do. And oh, I guess I'll respond right now. You know, why, why? It's, crazy. it's really hard. My godson actually said to me, "You're. Uh, I mean, even though I didn't do anything, of course, I checked my phone all the time. Plus, I have to say, though, even though I live near New York, I still have to see where we have to go and walk. So I was the one responsible for that, right? And you do that on your heady, uh, cell phone. And he was like, you really use your cell phone a lot. And I thought it was interesting because he's like 17 And he was, I mean, he, he checked his stuff, you know, and, and kept like with his people um, in the mornings or in the evenings. But um, he was pretty good. And I was like, how, how can this happen that, you know, I'm like 30 years older and more addicted to that thing than he is, you know? <laughs> But you're right. I think the breathing part, I mean, there's so many people that do like yoga and Yoga is not the right thing for me. I don't know. I, I'm like not bendable. <laughs> me too. I, I mean, I, I, the few times I've done it, I felt great. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's not, I don't feel called to do yoga. I feel called to be in the ocean, but I don't feel called to do yoga. So everybody needs to find their thing. No, that's you know, true. Pacing true. relaxes me too for when I'm doing stuff not for a deadline. Yeah, exactly. Because I do have low standards for myself in the sense that if I make something ugly, I do not care. Right. If it's bad, okay. That means tomorrow I can mask it. <laughs> you know, I, I just don't care. I'll, I was reading a group recently and they were all upset because it, they didn't even want to start mm -hmm. because they were so afraid it was going to turn out bad. I can't, that, to me, that is a tragedy. Yeah. If you start because you're afraid it's going to turn bad, you're missing out on one of the greatest joys of your whole life, which is to just go like this. Exactly. With, with your brush, you know, it, You gotta release yourself on the outcome, and yeah. quality, quality comes with quantity. But I, I, that is relaxing for me too. I would say that's probably my second most thing. Yeah, is to be in the studio and paint for me. I, that's really, that's really fun. So maybe an ideal. Hey, going back to your very first question, look at me bringing it full circle. My travel adventure would be scuba dive in the morning, and then come back and paint for me all afternoon. Eat something delicious. And then go do a night bath. That's what I would do. There you go. So now, here comes Mama Natalie. It's, um, you have 2018. Yeah. You, uh, you, there's no excuse. We're talking now in August. So look <laughs> at your calendar and block out right. two weeks in 2018. Yeah. And, and in Thailand where I can go shore dive. Who wants to come? Let's do a retreat. <laughs> My problem is, I don't think I'm a good scuba diver. I'm a klutz, and I probably get really scared. But I go with you to Thailand. Here's the thing, though. I think I could teach you. Well, I'm not <laughs> qualified. I'm not qualified to teach you. But when I first jumped in the water the very first time, I had a panic attack. And I was like, I told the dive instructor, I'm getting out. Like, I was, and I've never, that's the first panic attack I've ever really had where I had major physical symptoms of anxiety. And, um, he would, he talked me down and he like changed masks and, um, the training actually makes you calmer. Um, because once you like, Oh, if my mask comes off, here's how I put it back. And like, they, they teach you how to do mm -hmm. all the things. And so once you get all the technicalities down, it's just like, you know, anyway, you can snorkel. Yeah. I could call, I could, I could, well, I could paint, I could <laughs> sketch you. What we need to do is we need to have someone else organize it. <laughs> I don't want to organize it. 
<laughs> yeah, right. We need someone who organizes. Oh, how about Julie? I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, tell her we voluntold her. <laughs> tell her we voluntold her somewhere where I can dive. We can sketch and paint all day. Actually, Diana and I talk about this all the time. We're like, why don't we just go somewhere for us, sit on a beach, paint, trade canvases back and forth with each other. Um, wouldn't that be so fun? Oh, it would be awesome. Just time and money and money you can save. Right. You find money to do what you want to do. Right. Right. Money you can save. Time is the issue. Yeah, time is the issue. And also allowing yourself to use the paint. Uh, the paint, the time. Both. See, there's. <laughs> but both, it's true. Both those statements are true. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that was a lot of fun, Dina, because usually yeah. I only see you like once a year where we have our celebratory like um, dinner together and yeah. like, chat and we catch up with everything that happened in the year. So that was like an in between stop. That was awesome. <laughs> Sure. But um, I know it's kind of hard knowing that this is not going to be live um, in before four months from now. But um, is there anything that you would like to add, like classes that are coming up in 2018 or books, workshops, shows or anything? Yeah, um, I don't think I'm doing any more books, but I think I've taught everyone everything I know. But I'm doing I'm teaching on a cruise in August 2018. It's already 70% sold out. Um, so if you want to come check it out, it's to Belize, Honduras, and Cozumel, leaving out of Galveston. And so I picked those locations. So on on days where, that we're on the water, you're with me in class with painting. Uh, on days that you're in port, you're on your own. So a bunch of us are going scuba diving. So if you want to join us, you can. You can do what you want, but that's going to be fun. Uh, where the where can they sign up? Um, Cruise and Crop. Okay. Cruise and Crop people are doing that. And then uh, there's the back to back retreat with Michelle. And then I booked, we also booked a Canadian retreat um, in Edmonton. It's in the works. So if that ends up getting canceled, I apologize. But uh, for now, we're planning on, I think, September in Canada for a retreat with me and Diana. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I'll, you know, people just need to check my teaching schedule because I you're already booking. You're we're already booked through June of 2018. Um, I usually book book a year in advance, so just check it um, and come make art. Yeah, and then during Creative Jumpstart, there's pro there's most definitely coming some super fun things coming out. Um, so if you're seeing that you're a couple weeks. Uh, yeah. in and see something really cool that she knows. I don't know. I couldn't get it out of her. her <laughs> she was mom. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much, Dina. That was awesome for, for all your time. And, yeah. See you soon. Bye. Bye.